Welcome to today's edition of Cafe Diversity. I'll be your host, Sarah Nada. As always, today's show is brought to you by WCGTV and Westman Immigrant Services. I've got three guests with me today. If you would like to just go in order and introduce yourselves for our viewers. Uh, my name is Norm Jensen and I am the ESL Program Coordinator for Assiniboine Community College. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Keith Williams, and I'm the Director of Adult Learning at ACC. Okay, and? Megan Lamontang, Administrative Assistant for the ESL program, and also Joe Trail is our other admin person, but she couldn't be here today. Okay, perfect. So it sounds like it's got a core group of about four people for you guys. Yes. Good. Yeah. Okay, so we'll start with you, Keith. How long have you been involved with the ESL program at ACC? Um, I've actually just been here about six months now. Oh, okay, so you're brand new. <laughs> <laughs> brand, brand new. Okay, good. Thank you. And Keith, how about you? I've, I've been here for about uh, six months and two weeks. Oh, okay. Uh, very good job. <laughs> good job norm, topping him so, there. Yeah. <laughs> and Megan, how about you? I've been in the position for just over five years. Five years? Yeah. Okay, so you're like the super, you know everything. Kind of. Sort of. Good. You're the, really. you're the founding <laughs> member, right? <laughs> Sounds very good. Okay, uh, can you give me some background on the ESL program at ACC? How long has it been around for? Why did it get started? Um, well, ACC first offered its first English class in the summer of 2008. Oh, wow. Okay. And then from there, there was a significant demand for English classes from the newcomer population. So ACC was able to acquire more funding. And it's Citizenship and Immigration Canada who fund our program. Okay. Um, um, and at ACC, we offer free English classes for uh, Canadian newcomers who are permanent residents. And we offer classes for Canadian language benchmark levels 5 to 8. Okay. Um, whereas Westman Immigrant Services offers levels 1 to 4. So they come to us after Westman Immigrant Services. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's really interesting. Thank you. Okay. So... What was the purpose of having an ESL program in Brandon that wasn't at the Union? Because a lot of people who are newcomers to Canada come in through Maple Leaf, for example, or as, a, as opposed from having it at Westman Immigrant Services. As you said, they only go from levels one to four. So is that why the Brandon program started? Or That's, uh, That is essentially the reason why, um, Sarah, okay. the uh, Westman Immigrant Services offers up to level four and then uh, we, we basically go from levels five through eight. Um, in terms of the, uh, in terms of the, uh, the union, um, they, uh, their primary mandate is to serve their members and okay. there may be family members or, or other people who don't necessarily qualify so they can come and, and, and take English classes with us. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's a good point, right? Because while Maple Leaf is a big corporation and mm -hmm. has brought a lot of newcomers to Canada, they certainly don't have their hands on every newcomer to Canada that lives in Brandon. That's very true. Good. Thank you for, uh, for clarifying that for us. Um, what is the goal of the ESL program at ACC? What is it that you are trying to do? Um. Essentially, we uh, our our mandate or our goal is to is to address the English language needs of new Canadians in in the in the Brandon in Brandon and environs, and um, <coughs> again post you know post level four, so between level five and level eight. So you know our job is to find out you know specifically what people need. So whether it's you know. Uh, you know which which level, or if there are any English for special purposes type courses that are needed, and then okay. and then find a way to offer those uh, to meet people's timetable or scheduling needs. Okay, can you give me an example of an English for a specific purpose course? Currently, we're running a uh, a course in entrepreneurship. And oh, okay. That, uh, that course is designed um, to provide. Um, New Canadians who may have an interest in starting their own business businesses with um, with terminology, basic terminology, and some concepts around around um, around um, self employment. Okay, great, cool. That is actually really interesting, right? There are quite a few people who would like to start their own businesses, mm -hmm. and it gives them the tools, the foundation, right, to, yeah. to, to get that started. That's really awesome. So, um, why why is it important to attend ESL classes? Can't you just learn English from talking to people or watching television or listening to the radio? Well, you can pick up a lot from watching Sesame Street. 
I was actually talking to students about that today. It's like, if you're really, really worried, don't feel guilty about watching Sesame Street with your kids. But yeah. that's just the basics. Um, the best thing about a classroom is it's a safe environment. Mm -hmm. um, I've been to several other countries. Learning a new language is not an easy thing. And the most embarrassing thing is when you walk out in public and you ask for something and nobody understands what you're saying. And they respond and they speak so quickly you don't understand. So it's a really, really difficult thing. There's embarrassment. People become afraid of speaking. But in a classroom, it's a safe environment. You can make mistakes. You can learn. You can get correction. Uh, it's just a much easier way to learn. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. Um, so are all the classes taught by native English speakers then? Uh, at the moment, yes. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So people will get a good exposure to the, the Canadian English accent, right? Because we all have our, our lovely accent when we say things like a boot and a at the end of every sentence. Keep it fresh, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right, cool. So um, what kind of people, if I was a student, I'm a student, I'm going to ACC, I'm going to take ESL, what kind of people am I going to come in contact with during my time in classes? Uh, our students are literally from all walks of life from all over the planet. We have students from Africa, Asia, South America. These students have more or less decided they are newcomers to Canada. They have picked up their lives, they've relocated here. Some of them have left jobs as laborers, housewives, do all that sort of stuff. We also have engineers, doctors, lawyers. Wow, okay. They've come from every walk of life and the one thing they have in common is they chose Canada. Right. And as a community they work together and try to join our branding community. Okay, good. Do the teachers ever bring in guest speakers or anything like that to expose the students to uh, cute, like uh, areas of the community? Yes, we have brought in guest speakers. If uh, We build our classes around student interest. Oh, good. Uh, which is how we eventually led into the entrepreneurship program that Keith was talking about. All right, good. Uh, essentially, we talk to the students, find out what are their interests, what are their needs. And with the interest in entrepreneurship, we had one of our teachers bring in somebody who could actually speak about entrepreneurship. Oh, good. That went over popularly, so we created a whole class on it. Sure, why not, right? Because you don't know that there's a need unless people tell you. Yeah. And that's definitely a good way to find out what do the, what do the people want, what do they want to learn. Good, good. So um, what, kind, what are the teachers like? at ACC, the lovely teachers that teach your classes. What kind of people are they? <laughs> well, again, they come from all walks of life. <laughs> Some of them are born and bred Mani uh, Western Manitobans. They've been here their whole lives. We have people who are teachers. We have people who come to teaching later in life. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got several people who spent years and years and years traveling around the world teaching English. Oh, that's really interesting. We've got people with master's degrees. We've got a PhD. Oh, wow. It's a wide range of backgrounds. Okay. And essentially, our big job is welcome to Canada. <laughs> help, we'll help you learn the language. All right, good. Awesome. Um, what kinds of classes are being offered at ACC right now? Do you have just your standard level five, six, seven? We have the general English courses, which are levels five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. But we also run a lot of specific purposes, or ESP courses. Okay. Not ESP like I can read your mind. <laughs> English for specific purposes. That's my joke of the day. Um, one of our most popular courses is English for Academic Purposes. Oh. This course is aimed at lower level students who are learning to get into writing essays and writing for academic work. So it's reading, writing, uh, study skills to the more advanced levels where we're preparing the students so that they are ready to enter college, to enter university, to write a good essay to write a 3,000 word paper or more. Right. This is giving them the building blocks that they will need when they go off to college. Okay. What other uh, English for specific purposes have you got going on this semester? Uh, another popular one is English for uh, healthcare trades. Oh, this is for people who want to get into healthcare aids, maybe they want to go on to an LPN or an RN. If they want to work in the field, this course is designed to give them the basic medical terminology that you have and I have. Right. It's not the, the fine, fine detail. This is what you need 
If you're a Canadian walking in on the street and you want to be a health care aide, this is the knowledge of the English that you already have. Right. Giving them what they need to survive. We've also got one for people who are interested in early childhood education. Oh, that's right. If you really want good. to work with the, the little ones, if you want to work <laughs> in daycares and so on, we have a course to prepare you for that. Oh, okay. uh, in addition to the entrepreneurship, we have one aimed at hospitality. If you're in the hospitality trade, meaning if you're working in hotels, restaurants, if you're dealing with the public in any way, here are the basic skills, the vocabulary, how to communicate with people. That's another popular one. And mm -hmm. well, those are our main ones at the moment. Mm -hmm. And of course, pronunciation. <laughs> pronunciation is one of my old favorites. Um, the old title for this course was Accent Modification, which mm -hmm. is not really an accurate term. Uh, if you go to different parts of Canada, everyone speaks with a different accent. There is yes. no one pure Canadian accent. <laughs> if you go to the East Coast, you're going to get a completely different accent than what you will get in Vancouver yes. and so on. Very true, very true. So what this course is not, it's not changing the student's accent by any means. What it's doing is it's more or less teaching them how to speak with the neutral Manitoban accent, the neutral right. Western Canadian accent. Okay, good, good. Especially with the uh, with pronunciation, right? I find a lot of the the people that I come in contact with who are new Canadians, they have a hard time making those vowel sounds and those other consonant sounds that maybe don't exist in their first language. So exactly. I guess the pronunciation class kind of helps them train their face, Let's if you will, to make those noises <laughs> that they've never had to do. Okay, well that's really good. I know quite a few people who'd be interested in that. Um, now, we've been talking about the classes at ACC. You did touch a little bit on Funders, Megan. That sounds like uh, Citizenship and Immigration Canada yeah. plays a big part into that. What's the cost then to take these classes? How much money is it going to put someone out to come to school? If you are a permanent resident to Canada, the cost is zero. Ooh. It's, if if uh, you're a newcomer to a country, one of the most important things you must learn do is learn at least the basics of a language. So we are government funded and there is zero tuition for this course. It costs the students nothing. Perfect, perfect. But the only catch is then that they must be a permanent resident. So yes. mm -hmm. people who are on work permits or visitor or study permits, they wouldn't be allowed to work take this permits, class. Uh, permanent, uh, permanent residents are okay, but yeah. work permits, international students, or after you've become a citizen, unfortunately, uh, we can't accept you as a student. That's too bad. I wish we could. <laughs> well, maybe there's room for growth, right, in the future of looking at having a class so that yeah. once someone reaches their Canadian citizenship goals, they can continue their language learning if they'd like to. It's really good. That's very important. Um, now, are these classes offered all year round? Do you only go, like, if we look at the university semester, for example, from September to December, how, how does the timing work for these classes? Essentially, we run three different semesters, if you okay. want to call them that. I'll, I'll, I refer to them as tracks. Okay. We have the fall semester, which is September through December. Okay. We wrap up there for the holidays, and we come back in January. The January classes are a bit longer. They're January through the end of May. Okay. And then we have summer classes, which run two months over the summer. Okay. The only month we don't have classes is August. August. <laughs> everyone needs a holiday, especially yeah. our teachers. So <laughs> August is their vacation. August is the free party month, right? <laughs> ah, no school, no work. You just relax until September. I like that. Whatever they want to do, balls <laughs> are back in September. <laughs> Teacher classes. It's very good. Now, are the classes offered Monday to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 9 to 5? What about the time for the classes? Our classes, uh, we offer classes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay. These are our main classes. We offer morning classes, afternoon classes, and evening classes. Oh, okay. Uh, we also offer a due to popularity and the timing, we have a class on Friday for pronunciation in the morning. Okay. And we also run classes on Saturday, which is general English as well as uh, English for academic purposes. We have a course called uh, Canadian Culture. Oh, that would be exciting. Which is uh, more or less learning all about our Canadian culture <laughs> and the little things that make us Canadian that essentially newcomers are like, why are they doing that? Here's the answers. <laughs> Explain why we put maple syrup on everything, right? And why we're obsessed it's not with hockey. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly everything. Hockey usually will come up in the first class. 
That's very true. That's so good. Yeah. Saturdays, we have English for academic purposes, general English, pronunciation, and the healthcare class as well. Okay, so it sounds like it's all pretty packed. Now, where do classes take place? Because ACC has about three different campuses in uh, Brandon. There's the one on Victoria, the one on the North Hill, and the one downtown on Rosser. So, Our classes are downtown on Rosser, right okay. across from the Town Center Mall. Okay, so right down by the library then. So yeah. it should be really easy for people to find and come yeah. on in. 725 Rosser Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> See, there you go. I think actually that's right where one of the, um, the bus depots, the, yes. the bus central the stations are. This is the bus turnaround point. There you go. Take the bus to the end of the line and we're right next So line. no excuse that you can't find it, right? You just yeah. get on a bus and just wait until it stops downtown and you're okay. <laughs> now, Megan, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here. Okay. If I want to register for an ESL class, what do I do? Uh, well, first of all, because ACC offers classes for levels 5 to 8, mm -hmm. um, in order for students to register, they have to provide proof that they have a level 5 or higher to okay. join classes. So in order to do that, they'd probably go to uh, Westman Immigrant Services, which is also a certified assessment center. Oh. Um, so they'll have either, either taken classes there and have reached a level 5 and are ready to come over to classes at ACC or they will take their placement test um, and if they get level five or higher then they'll be referred to ACC and then they just have to show their permanent resident card and then we have some papers for them to fill out it's really it's a very simple so <laughs> <laughs> sounds yeah. nice and easy so yeah. they just need to get their paperwork and their card and come see you or Joe yeah right? exactly. and uh, exactly. you two ladies can hook them up with some wonderful English learning yeah wonderful <laughs> I do enjoy that okay what are the outcomes Outcomes of these uh, these English classes. So, is there some sort of certification after you've sort of completed a level? How does that work? Well, at the end of uh, our courses, uh, our students are assessed. They're giving a progress report by their teachers, just explaining. It's like, okay, here's where you do it. You did well. Here's your strengths. Here's some areas you need to work on. So that's okay. always very helpful. But at the end of it, you also get a certificate called the Link Certificate. Ah, okay. What does Link mean? Uh, language, language language instruction for newcomers to Canada. Okay. This is why yeah. Megan is my right hand. <laughs> <laughs> language Good. instruction for newcomers to Canada. And what okay. this states is their reevaluated benchmarks, their language benchmarks. Okay. So what can they do with this certificate now that they've got it? Yay, my certificate tells me I'm level seven. What this do I do with it? This document is actually, it is a legal document. It's okay. authorized by the government of Canada. They can take this when they are applying to colleges, to universities and whatnot. Colleges and universities may ask for a second uh, assessment, okay. but this is a legal document. They can use it if they want to apply for citizenship. Oh, well, that's perfect then. So. No extra paperwork that needs to get done and things like that. Yeah. Good, and I, I would assume then if someone were to, heaven forbid, leave lovely Manitoba and go to another province and they wanted to continue their language, would these certificates this is help them? It's all across Canada. Every province oh, in Canada good. works with the same certification and the same documents. So they can, if they're in Manitoba, they get a job out in Quebec. They can pick it up and go. Perfect. That's always wonderful because life does happen. Things yep. do change, right? People may have to leave for work. And it's always nice to know that you can continue your language learning and you don't have to potentially have to do tests over and over and over yeah. and over again. Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody who likes tests. Yeah. I certainly don't. Oh, Keith, you make me think like you might like tests. I don't mind them from time to time. <laughs> Especially when I'm delivering the test. <laughs> it's a little different. <laughs> that is a little bit different, yeah. It's, 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 you're very tricky. I like that. <laughs> All right, so uh, is there anything else that you guys would like to add uh, to our information today? Yeah, there was one other thing I'd like to add. Okay. That's, that's just that um, you'd asked earlier what the goal of our program was, mm -hmm. and essentially what, um, you know, what, what, what we want to do is help people to achieve a level of fluency in English so that they can participate um, fully in all aspects of, of civic society here in Canada. Okay. So that includes the workforce, education, um, arts and culture, and, and, and more. So really that's, you know, the, the suite of courses that we offer, whether they're English for Special Purposes courses or the CLB courses, are all designed with that in mind. So how to help people um, participate. 
participate okay. actively in, in all the spheres of, 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 uh, of public life. Perfect. That's very important, right? You're in a country, you don't necessarily know the language, and that can be a very big barrier for a lot of people, right? They can't go out and buy groceries, things we all take for granted because we are all native English speakers here. So that, that's very that's very noble. I do, I do enjoy that. Good, thank you. Anything else from my lovely guest today? <laughs> you think we're, we're good? Good for now? We're good. All right, well, I'd like to take this time to thank you very much for coming on the show with me today. I really enjoyed having you here. It was your joke of the day, Norman, was very wonderful. I, I do appreciate that. All right, and I'd also like to take this time to thank our viewers at home for tuning in today's, uh, for today's edition of Cafe Diversity. I've been your host, Sarah Nada, and as always, the show is brought to you by WCG-TV and Westman Immigrant Services. <laughs>